Good evening, I'm Linnea Batiste. And I'm Jasmine Harris. Nurses are becoming a scarce commodity in Florida hospitals. That's tonight's top story. A new survey is out about a shortage in the health field. News 20 at 5 reporter Victor Young visited a nursing school where students say requirements have gotten a lot tougher. A recent survey shows Florida will have a nursing shortage during 2012. More than 15,000 expected vacancies of registered nurses will leave the state in a shortfall. Dr. Rowena Norman says there are several factors. Several things that happened, the increased demographics, the aging and the lack of nursing faculty, and the lack of clinical spaces are three of the major factors that will impact us being able to educate more nurses at this time. A report by the Florida Center for Nursing says an aging population and new requirements to the national health care overhaul contribute to the shortage. Nursing student Jody Ann Berry says the process is challenging. The requirement to get into nursing school nowadays, it's so hard, it's very complicated. And um, the requirements after you graduate to get the NCLEX, pass it, um, is also um, very challenging as well. Although some recent nursing graduates have not been able to find jobs in their prospective field, the statewide demand exceeds the current supply of nurses. The state needs more nurses in a hurry. The Florida Center for Nursing was created to collect and analyze data on the nurse supply, demand, and education in Florida. The center projects a shortage of more than 56,000 registered nurses in Florida by 2025. For News 20 at 5, Victor Young reporting. Thanks, Victor, for that story. More budget cuts will be put into place for next year. $400 million in spending will be cut to the state's 11 universities. To date, senators discussed the budget and how it would affect the schools. Senators from the Tampa Bay area are calling the cuts unfair. Governor Rick Scott has received a letter of resignation from his secretary of the Department of Management Services. Jack Miles said in his resignation letter that he believes the agency is in better shape than when he arrived. Miles will continue to serve his term until March 31st. The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People is urging the Supreme Court not to cut the number of minority voting districts. The comments were submitted late, but the NAACP is hoping justice Jorge Labarga will still take the comments into consideration. In other news, a Tallahassee jail inmate dies during his six-month sentence. 43-year-old Ricky Jones served time in the Leon County Jail Medical Facility. Jail medical staff and officers found Jones unresponsive. He was pronounced dead later at Tallahassee Memorial Hospital. An autopsy indicates the death was of natural causes. At the Capitol, the Florida Senate voted on the second chance bill yesterday. The Senate bill will allow inmates to be resentenced if they were imprisoned with life sentences as teenagers. This only applies to individuals who serve at least 15 years of a life sentence if it's a crime other than homicide. Senator Steve Ulrich explains why he wants to push the bill through the Senate. Early as 14, 15, 16 years old, to a, li uh, uh, a life of imprisonment when um, perhaps they needed a second chance. The state has nearly 200 inmates that may qualify. One of the Senate committees voted in favor of the bill. The bill has to get the approval of two or more committees before it reaches the Senate floor. A local organization is hosting a fundraiser to provide homes for endangered children. News 20 at 5 reporter Jonathan Lowell spoke with organizers about the event. For a few kids, this weekend will consist of fast cars and mason jars. The sixth annual fundraiser for Treehouse Tallahassee will help more than 200 kids from negative family situations. Board member Blake Dowling says the organization was created in 1986 to help kids from homes where drug use occurred. Uh, at that time, the uh, crack e epidemic was uh, really wreaking havoc with you know, families uh, here in our community. So Treehouse was created to provide a place for kids with nowhere to go mm -hmm. to uh, have a safe home-like environment uh, where they could 
you know, continue in their normal lives. The festival originally started with a skeet shoot and car show. Dowling says the festival has calmed down in recent years to focus on the kids. Uh, but a few things like the skeet shoot, we're like, maybe we should get rid of the guns and the open bar uh, to make <laughs> sure that the message is truly focused on fundraising for these kids that really need our help. The cost to house a child in one of the organization's two homes is $4,830 a month. Pricing for the tables at the event start at $1,300. This year's organizers are hoping to have a big turnout to put more kids into happy homes. For more information or to donate, log on to treehouseflorida.org. For News 25, I'm Jonathan Lowell. Thanks, thanks, Jonathan. The Brown Bag Food Ministry is donating groceries to the community. The food ministry began back in 1998 in partnership with Second Harvest and Mount Zion Primitive Baptist Church. Volunteers gather at the Old West Enrichment Center to bag groceries for the elderly. Mrs. Dennis, the coordinator of the Brown Bag Ministry, says she's always looking for extra hands. We, we can use any help that we can get. So any students, tell them to come on because we really do because of course you can see that some of our men are you know are not as capable as they were some 30 years ago. The community service event is open to volunteers on the fourth Wednesday of every month. A local business says goodbye in Tallahassee, Peter Brooks Chocolatier. The store closed its doors Wednesday after being a part of the Tallahassee community for nearly five years. Sales for the store steadily dropped after the first year of its opening. Store owner Richard Herbert says business was not always easy to come by for the shop. The first year until August, October of 2008, it was good. After that, it went to pieces. Herbert plans on donating the proceeds from his last days of business to the United Way. He says he wants to give the Tallahassee community sweeter days despite the status of the store. That is really um, sad. I know that that, yeah. that chocolatier, that place really meant a lot for it. Especially, I know, I know it, it's really hitting them hard, especially after Valentine's Day. You would think they would you be You would think up. that their sales yeah. would be up. And also volunteers for um, the community food bank. Definitely. Definitely log on for that. Well, coming up on News 20 at 5, find out what happens while this reporter is live on the scene. Also, firefighters get a surprise while fighting a blaze in California. Stay tuned. You're watching your News 20 at 5. <laughs> 